Hello students, today we are going to discuss about the topic Kirchhoff's law. There are two laws, Kirchhoff's first law and Kirchhoff's second law. First law is also called as current law or junction law. Second law is called as voltage law or loop law. Let us first discuss about the first law. Junction law. The term junction means where more than two lines meet. As you all can see here, there are three lines meeting at a point. This is called as junction. Assume that uh, these are the three conducting wires through which current is flowing. The arrow pointing towards the junction, that means the current is entering into the junction. So the total current into the junction is equal to the total current leaving the junction. This is the first law. Total current entering in is equal to total current leaving out. Example, in this case, I1, I2, I3 is entering into the junction which is equal to I4, I5, I6 which is leaving out the junction. When you take I4, I5 and I6 to the other side, they get a negative sign. So this plus and negative cancel out each other. The sum will be equal to 0. So you can write in this way or the shortcut is the sum of current is equal to 0. This is called as current law. Now let us go to the second law which is called as voltage law or loop law. In the first case we told that sum of current is equal to 0. In the second law sum of potential difference is equal to 0. Let us try to understand this by taking an example problem. Find the resultant potential difference from the figure given below. So here they are asking us to find the total potential difference. To find the total potential difference, first we have to find the potential difference across each component. As you can see in this circuit, we have two components, battery and a resistor. So first individually we will find out the potential differences and then if we do the sum of both potential difference, we will get the total potential difference. So potential difference at battery is minus V1. So here you can see V1, I have written V1. Why minus? Because in this loop A, B, C, D, E, A, loop means the path starting and ending at the same point. So our path is starting at A, A, B, C, D, E and ending at A. So in this loop, the loop direction is from A to A. A to A. If you know the loop direction, then you can give a sign to the uh, potential difference at the battery. So now this is our loop direction and when you go to battery, positive to negative. That is why we are getting negative sign for the potential difference at battery. And now let us write the potential difference at resistor. Potential difference at resistor is to write this potential difference, we should know two directions. One is loop direction and one is uh, current direction. Loop direction you already know it is from positive to negative. That is from A to A and our current direction is like this. So it is the opposite direction. When you have, when the directions are opposite, you get a plus sign. That is why we got a plus sign here and then I1, R1. So potential difference at resistor is plus I1, R1. I know you all are getting a doubt that potential difference at battery I have written V1. The, why not I have written V, why not I used V here in this case? Because according to Ohm's law, V is equals to IR. V is also a potential difference. IR is also a potential difference. V I already used for battery. So IR I am using for the resistor. So potential difference at IR plus sign because both the directions are opposite we used plus sign and IR is the potential difference. Now we got the individual potential difference that is minus V1 and plus I1 R1. So if we do the sum of this we get a resultant potential difference minus V1 minus V1 plus I1 R1 is equals to 0. This is the sum of potential difference equal to 0. So second law tells us that sum of potential difference is equal to 0. That is the reason we have written 0 here. 
So by this we end our topic Kirchhoff's law. I hope you all have understood this.